And I also have an interest in the fields of cloud computing, so I'm also really excited for this session and to see what it brings to the table. So before we begin, let's just get an introduction on what exactly is the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors program all about and what how does it benefit you as a student? Well, being part of this program enables you to have exclusive learning resources from Microsoft, exclusive documentation to learn things like Visual Studio and Microsoft Azure, new tools for Microsoft to give you an edge over other people when it comes to uh, getting familiar with the newest Microsoft technologies, be getting to be a part of multiple summits, programs and initiatives. For example, uh, recently the Microsoft Imagine Cup, uh, many of you may know about that. And of course, in the process, you're making a difference in the world since you're empowering other people with technologies. Let's come to what Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors Islamabad and Student Ambassadors Club Karachi, what exactly are they all about? Well, they are Pakistan cities by chapters powered by Microsoft that strive to empower people with the latest technologies. Uh, by organizing uh, sessions and workshops like this one, as you can see. So we want to bring the best out of artificial intelligence, machine learning and various other technologies and getting people familiar with these technologies. Uh, we also strive to foster the new advancements and tools through Microsoft support. And we and obviously we are helping others to build a prosperous community that is filled with learning and gives you an opportunity to explore your horizons when it comes to technology and to really know your passions when it comes to this. So with that, let's have a drum roll for our speaker who is none other than Moiz Alvi. He is also a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador and he is also the General Secretary for Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors Islamabad. He is also the vice president for NAS ACM chapter, which is one of the largest computer science clubs on the NAS campus. And obviously he's an AI and ML enthusiast. He's done research on this field as well. And we couldn't think of a better person for, uh, for you to be helping this session on such an important and like trending topic like artificial intelligence. So let's have a round of applause for our speaker. And uh, yeah, this is really gonna be very exciting. So before we kick off, let's get on some particulars about the session. We want the session to be as clean and focused as possible, and we want this to be a very conducive learning environment for everyone involved here. Uh, obviously, we will be entertaining your queries about the content that will be discussed here, but it is re uh, recommended that you leave these questions at the end of the session so that our moderators can forward this to the speaker and he can answer your queries uh, in the appropriate manner. Also, we would like to shed light on our awesome developers community. Uh, in case some of you don't know, the developers community is a Discord server that enables all of you to engage with the trainer and speaker of this workshop. Not only that, but it also helps you to get exclusive resources, new opportunities, and a chance to connect with peers from all across the globe. So you all are really encouraged to join the Discord server. Uh, and before you join, you are also required to re please read all the rules on Discord before engaging. Uh, other important things to keep in mind are, uh, uh, we will be sharing a feedback form at the end of the session for us to let you know how the session went for you and any general comments that you may have so we can implement those in future sessions. You are required to fill this feedback form so that you remain eligible for the certification that you will receive at the end of this workshop. We will be sharing the link for this feedback form and the Discord server I mentioned earlier uh, in the meeting chat uh, while uh, at the end of the session or while the session is going on. So with that, I will be handing it over to our speaker, Moiz Alvi, who will be taking the runs and he will be introducing you all to the world of artificial intelligence. So let's get the session started. Assalamu uh, alaikum guys. I really hope I'm audible to you, all of you. Uh, can Ali, can you confirm if I'm audible? Uh, yeah, you're audible. 
so welcome to the introduction to artificial intelligence uh, workshop uh, also known as ai 101 so over here we're going to be discussing uh, topics related to to the field of artificial intelligence uh, i want to give full disclaimer before this workshop that this is an introductory ai workshop we will not be discussing the mathematics or the programming intensive elements of this field we will talk about them but we're not going to go into them so koi banda ye expect na kare ke hum like pure jo machine learning ke jitne bhi sub topics hain like jis tarah se k means hai jis tarah se logistic linear regressions hain uh, don't expect that we're going to be covering those theek hai so moving on uh, one second please acha so the objectives for today's session is obviously uh, we have uh, one second please acha so the objectives for the session is that we have to understand the applications of the field of ai theek hai ki ai ke field mein kya kya hota hai kya kya nahi hota uh, we have to understand and differentiate different ai components i'm going to talk about uh, the fields and sub fields of ai uh, we're going to implement a basic ai classifier so our friends at ssc karachi uh, sort of told me that we have to make this a little bit hands on and we have to talk about the uh, we have to talk about the um the the python implementation of af and ai classifier uh we're also going i'm also going to be providing the we're going to discuss learning paths and i'm going to be providing resources after this and you guys can use those resources to help improve uh, your learning and your understanding we're also going to be discussing cloud technologies and ai and how cloud technologies can help improve uh, your deep learning or machine learning models and finally we're going to discuss the opportunities that you have in artificial intelligence so please stay tuned so what is artificial intelligence basically so uh, a standard definition for this is that we try to use computers to solve problems or make automated decisions for tasks that when done by humans typically require intelligence uh, for example we have shape detection now what is shape detection if you give a child of 3 years you give them certain shapes and you tell them to try to differentiate between them uh, a 3 to 5 year old they will be able to do that and it, this requires a certain level of uh, intelligence it displays intelligence and for someone who does not have intelligence for example if you take a machine and you ask it to a machine that does an automated automation work and you ask that to differentiate between shapes it won't be able to do that so that is what artificial intelligence is we're basically trying to mimic intelligence aur hum apni taraf se ek intelligence create kar rahe hain so the power and uses of ai okay so i believe that the comments are on so the first thing that we should do is that can anyone tell me what this uh, robotic who the name of the robotic figure on the right side of the screen can anyone please tell me the name in the comments if anyone can guess let me just check out the comments over here okay so uh, sofia we do have uh, comments and people do know that it's it's sofia so what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to play the small video to show you guys what exactly this robot is and what it does so uh, do tell me if it's if the sound is not audible so we have to also make sure of that Okay. I'm the editor in chief of Stylus and today I have the pleasure of interviewing our cover star Sophia. How are you today Sophia? Good. What's up with you? I'm I'm doing great Sophia. Thank you for asking. Now Sophia for Stylus tell me what is the meaning of life? I think the meaning of life is to maximize pattern existence. To exist is the meaning itself. Sophia when Okay uh so you guys saw the video and you saw that we have this artificial intelligence robot that when you ask questions from this robot it gives answers right so is this a form of artificial intelligence are we trying to create um objects or are we trying to create uh, certain beings 
that have a level of understanding that can engage in abstract thought. What abstract thought is basically that it's ke bagher koi um, certain boundaries diye aap ek insaan se kahe ki aap ek topic ke upar soche sirf aapne sochna hai. That is what abstract thought is. So this robot as you saw it's not uh, it, this is not a being that can engage in abstract thought. What this robot does is that it has an AI at its back end and that AI processes information and it tries to come up with certain answers or certain solutions to problems uh, that are uh, sort of based on AI. So you have an AI back end and at the front end you have this robot. So the truth is that we have yet to come up with certain artificial intelligent robots that can think on the level or surpass the level of human beings. Jo basically ho raha hota hai wo ye hai ki hum AI ko use karte hain sub fields mein solutions dene ke liye basically. Theek hai? So that is actually what's going on. Okay. So now uh, let's sort of talk about the fields of AI. So I think that my comments here are disabled. So I can't really see if you guys are saying anything. Small request, if you can please explain in English also. Okay, uh, I am explaining in English. Um, this is the English language. Uh, so in actuality, uh, what I just said was that this robot, it cannot think at the level of, of human beings right now. And there is no robot that can think on our level or surpass our level. That is what we call strong AI. Uh, what we have right now is a weak pattern based AI. OK, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the fields of AI. First of all, you have data processing and cleaning. So what is data processing and cleaning? It's basically that if you have uh, the data of, say, of this, like, for instance, this workshop, uh, we had a lot of responses. Say that we have another workshop that has or we have an event that has 50,000 responses. And what you want to do is you want to, uh, based on a certain criteria, you want to select only 100 people. So if we use a human being for that, we tell a human that you have to go through 50,000 responses and you have to tell us the top 100 responses. That's going to be a little difficult. So what do we do? We create an AI, create an artificial intelligence that can, in a matter of seconds, go through those 50,000 responses and it can give us the top 100 responses. Now, don't be confused here. You can do that with or without an AI automation, basically. But nowadays, you're trying to use AI in, a, in something which you call transfer learning, where you take these, uh, you take one form, you, you have an AI that has uh, taken the top 100 forms for one form, and then you can apply the same bot on other forms, and it's going to get that stuff done as well. So I want you to take note that all of these uh, different fields, they all are based off of human learning that humans can do these things as well and when humans do these things you can implement them in ai you can create a bot that can do those stuff as well like speech recognition abhi filhal main english mein baat kar raha tha to aap logon ko samajh aa rahi thi ki main kya baat kar raha tha and when i switch to urdu aap logon ko tab bhi samajh aati hai ki main kya baat kar raha hu that is speech recognition that is understanding ke acha ye jo you guys are taking in the words that i'm saying and your brain is able to process it, okay, this is English. Or you can process it, okay, this, okay, ab jo main baat karo, Urdu mein karo. this is the form of speech recognition. So AI has the power of taking your words, taking what an input, and able to decipher it, okay, is my wordings kya use ho rahi or baat kya ho rahi That is also one of the powers of AI. Then you have natural language, language processing. Natural language processing is a very vast field. Inside natural language processing, you are actually processing the English language. Or is in the job called predictive keyboard out there? I'm pretty sure a lot of uh, people here have a predictive keyboard. If you don't, let's just uh, see in the comments again because mine are disabled for some reason. Okay, we don't have any comments. Sir, Thora sa Urdu mein please request Urdu aati hai samaj 90% from Pakistan. Ha, to main yeh koshish kar raha hoon ke main Urdu mein bhi baat kar raha hoon and main beech mein English pe bhi switch kar raha hoon. To main dono languages implement kar raha hoon because I'm trying to keep a balance between you guys. I saw the responses and what I noted was ke there are some people here who understand English better and some people here who understand Urdu. I guess the majority understand Urdu better. To main koshish yeh karunga ke main beech mein Urdu mein bhi switch hota raha hoon. So uh, that's natural language processing. It's a basically predictive keyboard, predictive sentences. Uh, for instance, um, my cat is dash. 
So when you say my cat is dash, so you can fill in a lot of words. But if you give it to an AI that has done some training, it would probably fit in my cat is fat or my cat is cute or adorable. So it's the not wordings out there that the whole field is natural language processing. So image processing and transformation. Uh, like you have, um, for example, you take an image and you want to enhance it. Uh, for instance, you want an AI that can take the picture. It can increase brightness on its own. It can increase depth on its own. That is image processing and transformation. Then we have uh, computer vision. Computer vision is basically aapka, it's your automated driving. It's your automated, uh, you have airplanes which have autopilot basically. So what those things do is that they look at a surrounding and they tell you that it's surrounding and action is this way. Uh, just to answer, when you have a self-driving car, what that does is that uh, when you're driving a car, for example, and you see that ja there's a person walking in front of you. So what you try to do is that you, you hit the brakes, you stop. So what computer vision is that it tries to analyze the environment, the situation. It takes that and then it makes a decision that Acha, ab, samne banda ab ruk jana that is computer vision. It's different from image processing and transformation. We have the field of robotics. Robotics is both of the camera. Just now, Sophia, she is a robot, and uh, she is using an AI. Just now, we have other AIs as well that make use of robotics. And then we have automation. I already discussed automation. Okay, we are trying. Okay, different. Hum AI use kar rahe hain, we can eliminate uh, manpower. Taake hume long ki kam zarurat pade, aur hum jaldi, efficiently, or automatedly chale. That is the field of automation. I'm just going to check the comments again because mine are disabled. Uh, yes, I will try to maintain a balance between Urdu and English to help everyone understand the session. Uh, if there's any issue in the then do feel free to give comments. I will pay attention to those, okay? Moving on. So what are the components of AI? Uh, I was reading your responses, and I was reading who are either working on machine learning, who are working on deep learning, the field of artificial intelligence is very vast. And that field, if you want to understand the components of it, if you want to understand what are the parts of it, you can divide them into machine learning and you can divide them into deep learning. As you can see, this graph, uh, this diagram I have on the right side, uh, you can see that machine learning is a subsection of artificial intelligence. Or you can see that deep learning is a subsection of machine learning. Now, how do we how do we perceive this? Uh, how should one look at this? I'm going to draw an analogy between artificial intelligence and the field of mathematics. The thing about mathematics is that mathematics may you have this subfield called calculus. Calculus jota it is a study of graphs. And another this is Torah loosely based. If there are any mathematical uh, bachelors over here, then please don't uh, don't get mad when I say this. But you can think that statistics, statistics and probability and statistics makes use of graphs. So statistics uses calculus and calculus uses mathematics. So you can look at artificial intelligence. So, OK, I should check the comments. Uh, let's see. Can you repeat the first point, data processing and cleaning one? Okay, I'll get back to the data processing and cleaning at the end, okay? Like uh, when I'm talking about the opportunities. This all sounds great, but I'm guessing high level of coding and data store at back end, which facilitates AI to do all that is, is doing. Uh, guessing high level of coding and data store at back end, which facilitates AI to do all that. It, I'm not able to understand your question, but yes, you do have an AI at the back end that is sort of monitoring all of this. Sir, screen show ni ori aapki. Acha, can I uh, request one of the moderators to please tell me if my screen is visible or not? One of the moderators. Moish, uh, your screen is visible. I can see your slide. Okay, my screen is visible. So what we can do for you is, Hamad is, ke hum is session ko record bhi kar And if you join our Discord channel, could a moderator please add the link of Discord here? Uh, we're going to put that uh, the link of that in the Discord channel as well. So you can continue to continue with this So um, moving on, uh, you have 
mathematics, you have calculus, and then you have statistics. This is exactly how uh, artificial intelligence works. You have artificial intelligence. You use artificial intelligence to bring up the field of machine learning. From machine learning, you move towards deep learning. Now, the reason you have machine learning, the reason you call it machine learning, is because uh, if you try to integrate, if you, I'm pretty sure all of you know, have idea about integration. Vagera. So if you try to do integration using plus minus signs, using addition, it is possible, but it becomes really hard. So that is exactly why we have machine learning. Now, okay, I'm going to check the comments again. Okay, perfect. So what is the recommended learning path? Uh, the first step to understanding our Artificial intelligence is that you should learn Python. If you are a beginner, someone who has no idea about Python, then I have a solution for you. Uh, but I want to first talk about people who are good at Java, who are good at, um, let's say, C, C++. I myself, I'm an electrical engineer, and uh, like I'm doing the bachelor's in electrical engineering, and I was introduced to C and C++. So I actually took out time in the summer, and I had to learn Python. So your first, the first step is that you have to learn Python. And the reason for this is that when you come towards deep learning, if you if you want to go towards deep learning, then deep learning has certain libraries that make use of Python. So a person who doesn't understand Python will have difficulty. Now, I read the forms the when you guys were applying, and I know that you have a lot of people who have a programming background. So no worries. Just for you guys, I gathered the resources. So we have this website, which is called HackerRank, okay? I'm gonna provide, once again, the full disclaimer, I'm gonna provide all of the links in uh, the Discord channel, and I will also be giving those, uh, yeah, I'll be giving those in the Discord channel so you can make use of them later. So what HackerRank does is that when you log in, it automatically starts your training, okay? It helps you understand, it helps you uh, learn Python. So you can start there. And just for you guys, okay, I'm gonna open my GitHub over here. So what we're gonna do is that I'm gonna try to put as many resources like as I can on my GitHub. Uh, this is my GitHub over here, uh, github.com slash muizalbi. And if you go to the repositories, I'm gonna upload the repository as well over there in the Discord channel. So you have the Python, pro, uh, the Python problems repository, the Python programs repository. So what I did over here is that uh, I took hacker rank questions and I answered them with my own code. And since this is my own code, it's open source, so I'm allowed to share them here. And uh, you can make use of that. You can uh, try learning Python on HackerRank. And then once you're done with HackerRank, you can come here and you can, uh, Sat you can look at the, the main questions and the answers. So this is one of the favors I can provide to you in the resourcing. Uh, for someone who's doing Java and is like, I have Java to switch to Python. Ki taraf, I will tell you if you have command over a language, it's very easy to switch to another language. I will be providing a link to a YouTube channel which is called Learn Python in Seven Minutes. And uh, no, actually, it's, it's five minutes. Learn Python in five minutes. So, it's not the basics of uh, what, uh, how a function is different in Python and how you can implement an output, a print statement, all of that. So, you provide it after So, the first step is starting out with Python because and the reason for this is your deep learning libraries. If you're feeling confused, that's okay. I will get to that. I will explain that when we come to deep learning. I'm going to check the comments again. So, course, kitne month ka hai? Course outline bata de. Acha, right now, uh, as of Python, it's uh, it's going to take you a week or two maximum. That's the amount of time it took me because I had some information about C and C++. Like for someone who's new, it could take about three weeks, but not more than that. Especially if you're making use of, uh, your, of a hacker rank account, this is free. You can sign up, you can set up your, your account here and start practicing. And if you make use of the Python repository I'm sharing with you, then you Okay, moving on. So uh, coming back here, the first step is, of course, learning Python. I will be sharing all the resources for that. Uh, then you should move towards classic machine learning examples. I will talk about that when we talk about machine learning. Then you have you should make use of deep learning, and then finally you should come towards cloud technologies. The reason I gave this learning path is because I realized that a lot of people who applied are already learning something. They're at a certain stage. Jin logon ne machine learning kar liye hoga, unko ye unko ye pata hoga ki deep learning ki taraf jana hai next. Lekin unko samajh nahi aayegi ki kis tarah jana hai. So we will discuss that in more detail. 
uh, if someone knows Python then and wants is interested in AI, the first step to getting into AI is starting with machine learning. And <laughs> if there's someone who is working on deep learning and is facing issues, uh, like for example, if you graphics card, hai, like even the system, hai, uske bhi, there's a virtual graphics card. So I make use of certain practices on I make use of cloud technologies to help facilitate the issues I face with while training models. So this is your recommended learning path. You can write this down. You can use this. This will help you in understanding AI. And this is the path that I have followed. They may be a better path. They may be a better practice. Like in, uh, again, the way that we marketed this event was okay, there is so much material, so much stuff out there. If you have YouTube and Google, you will get so much that you will be confused about how you should go AI. Because AI is a very vast field. Hai. So the best way is this path. Okay, I'm going to just check the comments again. And I'm seeing that someone is sharing their GitHub profile. Please do not share your GitHub profiles um, over here or your LinkedIn profiles. What I really want is that you take advantage of the resources. You don't even have to follow my GitHub. You don't even have to start my repositories, but do take advantage of this stuff. So what I meant was for AI to perform complex function, my understanding is that it will require complex coding as well as a lot of data source to help AI to make decisions. Is it true? Uh, Midhat, that actually for us, it depends. It depends on K. Like, for example, in machine learning, I will get to this. I'm, uh, please send this question to me at the end of the question and answer session. So confused. Now I will answer this question. Just give me some lead over virtual graphics card, please. I will get to that at the end, too. So uh, question answer session, so everyone is on board with us. I do have the answers to these questions. We'll give them at the end. Coming back. So. Uh, the first question is that comes to your mind okay, when you start with artificial intelligence, you have to say that we have machine learning and we have deep learning. Karni hai. <laughs> but what is this part of artificial intelligence? If you guys can see my mouse, I'm moving over this section of artificial intelligence that does not come in machine learning or deep learning. What is this? Isko kya so let's first talk about that. Let's talk about the basic, basic, basic uh, artificial intelligence. <laughs> the basic Terrain artificial intelligence are, well, uh, they're if else statements. I'm going to show you a little meme I've saved just for this occasion. So this is a famous meme. I'm just going to give a minute for this to load. I really hope that the internet connection is um, does not mess with this. So this is a meme that came out in 2014, and iski itni sense banti nahi hai. Um, because if you think about artificial intelligence, what people think, I don't really know what's going on here. Uh, there seem to be two brains using some uh, form of telepathy, which doesn't really make sense. If you come towards this side, uh, you can see a 3D neural network, or maybe they're just convoluting everything with each other. So it doesn't sense. But like, the interesting thing I found about this meme is that what artificial intelligence actually is, is it's 10,000 if statements. Now, people who are currently studying machine learning and deep learning, let me try to explain this in a way. Think about Sophia, the robot I just showed you. What if I told you, okay, there is a way that you can, like, for instance, the uh, the interviewer, she was asking her questions, okay, how are you today? So when this question is asked from a robot, the robot can answer, uh, not fine or I'm well or whatever, depending on the if else statements you give. So it is possible. I'll come back to the slides. Um, where are the two of them opened? Actually, that, that just ruined everything. One second. I'm so sorry for that. Uh, so yes. Um, so the first question that comes to your mind is, is this even possible? It is possible. You can do that. If you have a robot, if else statements, you can tell us if this is input or this is output. This is called a deterministic approach. This is the logic and rules based approach. And the problem with this approach is, the problem is, first of all, you have to write 10,000 lines of code. That is the first problem. Uh, it's not very feasible and it's a very, very limited approach to solving actual AI problems. Uh, but it is it is again doable. Secondly, the another limitation of this approach is execution time. Uh, the people who have used HackerRank would know that 
it takes about two seconds to execute a code of C and C++ program, but it takes about 10 seconds to execute a Python program. So when you're writing tens of thousands of lines of code, so after the process error, it's going to go over all of those lines, and by the end of it, uh, it's going to take you like hours just to get a simple task done. So it's really not feasible. But yes, this thing is actually being implemented. It's being implemented in deep learning. If L statements, uh, it's combined with object-oriented programming. If you don't know what object-oriented programming is, I will provide a resource for that. And I will also provide a resource for if L statements for people who don't know what these things are. So I wrote this small sample over here of uh, object-oriented programming plus if L statements. That if you have a self-driving car and it sees here there are people on the road, there are no people on the road, that road.people is none, then you make the car move or else you make the car stop. If you see people on the road, you stop. This is a part of computer vision and this is actually being implemented in deep learning. So again, someone asked about this complex codes and when you work in machine learning, you come against these uh, complicated mathematical functions. So it has been made very easy. All you have to do is know what, what to use, where to use it. So we're gonna go over that in more detail. Again, if those statements are a very limited approach to solving AI problems, if you go up to someone and you're like, hey, uh, I've created an AI code with an if else statement, they will be like, uh, and that doesn't really come into the machine learning or deep learning domain. And that is exactly what I've discussed here in this diagram, that this is the portion of artificial intelligence that doesn't go into those. Moving on, uh, let's come towards machine learning. So what is the term machine learning? What, what is actually going on in machine learning? In machine learning, algorithms try to find patterns in data and infer rules of their own. Now, I want you guys to look at this example of a cat and a dog, okay? How can you, as human beings, tell in this is cat or which dog? Hai? The reason you can do that is because you've seen uh, perhaps thousands of or millions of pictures of cats and dogs on the internet, on uh, on your television, on the street. You've seen so many pictures of cats and dogs. So your brain is now accustomed to it. dog So that is exactly what we're trying to get uh, machines to do. You give them huge amounts of data and they try to find the patterns. They try to find the regularities, irregularities and try to separate them. That's how we learn from data. So now I'm going to give you a hands-on example to help you understand machine learning. We're going to get to that. Uh, the thing that I want you guys to note is that in machine learning, I'm not going to go into the mathematics. I'm not going to go into the, the programming, but I will talk about the uh, something called learnable parameters. What a machine learning uh, algorithm does is it takes data, it tunes its uh, learning parameters, and the learning parameters ko wo, us data ke mutabik set and then se wo apne rules implement karta hai. So let's go to the example. I'm going to open my Jupyter notebook here. It's called the feature classifier problem. Uh, could some of the moderator please tell me if uh, it's more it's visible or not? Um, this uh, I think is visible. Uh, your Jupyter notebook is not visible. Perfect. OK, so I'm going to talk. Let's, let's just take a minute and I want you guys to Torah read this problem. I realize we're Torah short on time, so I'm going to try to go over here hastily. If you don't understand what's going on here, this is fine. This is this problem has been created mainly for people who Andrew and G's machine learning course kar hai, filal, and they're thoda sa confused in that we're mathematics kyun kar rahe, aur hum, aur computer learn kaise kar rahe. So this is going to give you a good idea. Uh, so basically what's happening is a computer is given a data set of labeled animal heights to help train its learnable parameter X. A learnable parameter X is in our code mein, aur humne Okay, once trained, the computer will be given a height value and will have to determine whether this height belongs to a cat or a dog. When the computer receives the height, this is the algorithm now. Receive the job training algorithm final height value x then it outputs dog and less than x it outputs cat. Now I want you to look at this data set. You human beings to look at this data set, you can write it down if you want. आप लोग मुझे इसमें बता सकते हो कि इन द कमेंट्स के किस अच्छा आई शुड गिव यू फुल डिस्क्लोजर सिंस आई वर्क्ड ऑन अ लॉट ऑफ क्लासिफायर प्रॉब्लम्स बिफोर के अ कैट इज यूजुअली बिटवीन 20 टू 25 सेंटीमीटर्स इन हाइट 
a dog is usually above 40 and goes up to 110 centimeters height. So I want you guys to uh, arrange this as in ascending order and thoda sa tell me ki kis height ke upar aapko dogs milenge, kis height ke niche aapko aur uski equal to aapko cats milenge. And this will give you a good intuition about how machines learn basically. So I'm going to do that while you guys are doing that. If someone has commented, good. Okay, so no one has commented yet. So take your time while I also uh, turn this into ascending order. You just have to tell me ki kis height ke upar aapko cats milenge or wo dogs milenge, kis height ke niche aapko cats milenge. So there is one, one parameter. One parameter just se upar dogs hain or se niche cats hain. Is data ko dekhte hain. So take your time. Um, I'm also going to enjoy working on this. Okay. Cat is always less than 40. Cat is less. Okay, here we have the perfect answer. Cat is less than equal to 25. Just by looking at this data, you were able to determine that a cat is less than equal to 25. I'm going to solve this over here for the people who have not been able to solve it. So by looking at this data, you were able to determine that a cat is always going to be less than or equal to 25. And since I said one parameter, so a dog is always going to be greater than 25, right? So can anyone here tell me what the label for this question mark will be? Fast guys, we're sort of running out of time. Uh, no, uh, good. Uh, I really like you guys are trying, but uh, only one. Okay, fine. Very nice. So we all know. What about a puppy? Uh, no, we're not factoring puppies right now. So now we know that the question mark is definitely going to be a dog. And you did this just by looking at this problem. Now let's create an algorithm. Let's uh, okay. So in a machine learning problem, you usually have a training set and a test set. So this all is your training set. OK, and this is your test data to see if our algorithm, sorry, if our algorithm functions properly or not. So let's start writing the program. Uh, if I'm going to just, we're a little bit short on time, so I'm just going to start writing stuff over here and I'm going to explain it. Sad, sad. So the first thing that we should do is that we should probably write down our data. OK, Achha, uh, I will give a disclaimer at the end, but first of all, let's just write down our data. So if you don't know Python and you don't understand what's going on here, that's totally fine. There's no need to be confused. Just uh, watch and observe and just learn. So I'm first of all, I'm doing is I'm uh, adding all of this um, height in the order it's given to us because I want my program to do the learning itself. 18, we have 40, we have 50. No, no, we don't have 50 actually because 50 is our uh, test data. We have our data and now we need our labels. So our labels are obviously they're going to be cat. We're going to have dog. We're going to have um, we're gonna have cat again. It's gonna take me a while. We're gonna have cat again. We're gonna have a dog again. All right. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people who are actually studying machine learning are gonna find a lot of flaws in this problem, and uh, they are definitely flaws. But I will get to that later. We have this. Okay. And now we should probably initialize um, our learning parameter, and we should also uh, initialize our test height, which is 50. So I'm just writing that down over here. Short on time, so I'm sort of speeding over here. Uh, can anyone think of the algorithm? Can anyone think two arrays list? Yes, perfect, two arrays list. Can anyone here think of the algorithm? Can Quant's algorithm use getting it to help us uh, determine X, which is 25? What algorithm are we going to use? It's an if else statement. It's going to be using a loop. So I'm just going to start writing it down because we're short on time. All right, so I think we have someone here who was actually determined it. If else, yes, we're going to use if else. So let, let's go for that. Let's go for if, for um, x is less than equal to no, sorry, for i in range. All right, so this is the syntax of the code. We usually use this stuff. So no need to get confused. If you don't know what's going on here, that's totally fine. Length of data, and we're going to use if data. I. Again, you're gonna. I'm gonna provide all the resources regarding Python. So if anyone here does not understand what's going on here, totally, totally fine. Do not be confused. But for those of you who actually have program background, I believe that's the majority of you. Uh, this is exactly what should happen. 
is equal to cat. We have x and the protein. So no error so far. And of course, we're going to need the, our test uh, data. And for testing, I'm obviously going to use if x is less than or equal to h. Uh, we're going to we're going to print dog because we said that um, actually is not going to be less than. Uh, is this right? Am I doing this right? I don't think so. Because that if x is less than or equal to height, um, we print. Yes, this is fine. Okay, so this is it. Now, uh, if this uh, we wrote this program right. I'm just going to first go to your queries and see what everyone here is typing. If else two area list, we will count to four. Uh, yes, it's going to. I'm actually doing this in a more automated way that Jitna bada ye hai na, hamara data set hai, usko hi maine le li, uske length ko le li hai, with, with this built in length function. So that really helps. Okay, what else do we have here? We'll count the array size. Yes, I already talked about that, sir. What are we doing in case of one? I will get there. I will get there. Hamad, I will get there. Okay, now if we're right, if we did this right, uh, you guys said that the answer to this problem is dog, right? So if we did this right, then our um, this AI should be able to give dog. Please, okay, that's uh, so my bad intention. Okay, and congratulations, it gave us dog. Uh, we just built a program, Tika, that uses data and determines for an unknown labeled data, what should it? What should the label be given the data? It is learning, it is improving through this data. So congratulations. If uh, you guys were not able to follow, that's perfectly fine. I have created once I'm going to my GitHub again. And on my GitHub profile, uh, I, I think it's going to be more feasible if you guys just somehow save the GitHub profile with you so you can open it whenever uh, you have to look at resources. So I've created this AI 101 uh, repository, and in this repository, repository we have the feature classifier example. So this is preloaded, um, and you have everything duly commented over here, so you can just look at that and you can understand it. Once again, I will be providing all the resources on our Discord channel. We are very very short of time for the repos, guys. Sure, you can you can you can do that. That's fine. Okay, uh, coming back, we have to get this done faster. Uh, no, not you. OK, um, we're a little bit short of time. Uh, we might need more time for this as well. OK, so congratulations. You built your first AI classifier. Um, that's that's pretty that's a pretty big achievement. But let's move forward towards classical machine learning. So I want you guys to answer this question. Was this program an example of classic machine learning? People who are taking the class, the machine learning course right now, will know that this is not a machine learning problem. The reason that it's not a machine learning problem, this is more of an AI problem than a machine learning problem, is that we have this modern definition that a computer program is said to learn from experience E with respect to some class of tasks T and performance measure P. So in this problem, we had experience E, which was classified cats and dogs. Uh, with respect to task, uh, we had a feature which we called height. And we had a performance measure P. Uh, we did not have a performance measure. We were not seeing how well our algorithm is doing. Okay? So uh, we do not know exactly. We're not exactly improving from our mistakes. What we're doing is we're just fine tuning X and we're getting it fixed. Another issue you guys have seen in this problem is that we're automatically assuming that all cats are less than 25 or equal to 25. There is no cat that can exist with a 26 centimeter height. You also noticed that uh, we are not factoring that there could be also be like chihuahuas or tiny dogs. So that's why this is not a machine learning problem. Uh, but I wanted you guys to do this example anyways, so you could understand that data say a learnable parameter ko train kaise karte hai? Or is data say hum test kaise karte hai program? Well, I wanted to show you guys an algorithm that actually works. So this was the thing, but it is it is really flawed. So it is not machine learning. If you go to a guy who knows machine learning and you'll be like, they're gonna be like, where is the performance measure P? 
So this was an AI thing and it falls into this category right over here, but it does not come into machine learning. So that's important. Okay. So what are the applications of machine learning? You have, okay, so uh, what did we learn first of all? We learned that for a machine learning problem, the workflow actually, from data we extracted features, like we knew that there was a data of cats and dogs, the feature we took was height. We put that feature through the machine learning model and we adjusted our learnable parameters. The people who are studying machine learning will know these learnable parameters as weight and bias. It's not that there are more learnable parameters that I won't go over, like in, this is this is machine learning in a nutshell. So the applications of machine learning are uh, spam filtering and image detection. Uh, for spam filtering, you have like just like your emails are out there. like for example, you have uh, you have an email uh, like there are 50 people in quick email jar or 10 of them find the email inappropriate to go to spam it all the time. So what the machine learning algorithm does, what the backend does is wo mail ko scan karte hai aur usme pattern nikalta hai ke kaun se words jo hai na wo usme wo ho rahe uh, repeat ho rahe Like for example, the very common word you have is Nigerian prince. Uh, you have other such words as well. I'm pretty sure that you guys know that uh, what the inappropriate messaging is or you have these offers, uh, you have these uh, survey offers, just go bilkul spam karta jata hai. Uh, the reason that this is a machine learning problem is, is because it improves over time. Uh, where you started with 50, you go to 500, you go to 5,000. Okay, now in machine learning, it is very, very important that you have data Like, if you have seen in the problem, that our model was as accurate as the data given to us. It that the, uh, the accurate height is 25.5 centimeters for a cat height. So, you have to improve data to provide data. And then you, again, you have image detection. In image detection, again, you extract certain features. I will cover that uh, in, in a while. And you put them to the ML model, you adjust the learnable parameters, and you detect something. Okay, now, full disclaimer it is 8.54 right now. Uh, this workshop, it will go slightly above, it could go to 9, uh, 10, 9.15. So for that, I will say if anyone wants to leave, totally fine. The recording will be available on Discord. But for those of you who are going to stay, I will discuss the difference between machine learning and deep learning. And I'm sure a lot of you want to know what that is. So please stick around. And I'm going to talk about uh, how cloud works and how cloud is efficient. So I'm asking for a little more time here. Uh, this is going to be very much worth it. Tika? So again, if uh, some moderator could please share the Discord link in the description so people can join. And when you go to Discord, please go to the artificial intelligence uh, subsection of Discord. Moving on. So uh, first of all, before we discuss the difference between deep learning and machine learning, we need to know what deep learning is. Deep learning is a subsection of machine learning, which is a component, and it solves the limitations with classic machine learning. I will go over that in a few minutes, and you guys will enjoy what I have in store for you for that. So deep learning makes use of neural networks and complex calculations, which are GPU intensive. So a neural network, this is what a neural network looks like, basically. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have looked at it before. A neural network is a mode of calculation for someone who's new. Uh, you have one node sending data to the next node, and then it's sending it to another, to another, to another. And that data is also being transferred back to it. This is the ideal way of learning. I will not go into the mathematics of this of how it works, but I will tell you that this is the method that is being used uh, right now in deep learning. But I would like you to think of it like this way, that it takes data, breaks it down, and it it uh, each node tries to uh, find out the probability of a certain feature being true or not. I will get, get onto that. Discussing machine learning versus deep learning, what is the difference? Like you all know what machine learning is, deep learning is, but when you try to find that, if you try to explain the difference between both, a lot of people have of this problem. Okay, this is a picture of mine I took last night. I'm not proud of this picture, but it does help a lot in solving the of understanding what the border between machine learning and deep learning is. So if you look at it in, in terms of machine learning, uh, what will our program do? Our program will, as I said before, it will take out some features. So the first feature we're taking out is the distance between the eyes. And this distance is relative relative to the distance between the forehead and the chin. This is your first feature, the distance between the eyes, the distance between the forehead and the chin. 
and it's also taking into account face shape okay face structure to hai is it what is the uh, is it this is oval is this a uh, circle what is that basically it's taking these two things it takes these things it takes about 50000 other pictures of mine and then what it will do is is that it will train uh, uh, the model and it will adjust its learnable parameter the one that we discussed before uh, the height one it will train that and it will find the most accurate value so that when i give it a test picture what it's going to do it's going to compare that with our existing data and it's going to tell you okay how big this this is a picture of moise or this is not a picture of moise theek hai i'm going to check the comments once to see if anyone has any problem we are very short on time okay uh, i think this is a pretty clear example if anyone has any issues uh, to this we i will address them later all right now what does deep learning do if i were to ask uh, to train a deep learning model to take this picture of mine and train itself on this well, how how would that how would that be different from what a machine learning model does well first of all as as i told you before you have a neural network now a neural network processes images if people have or, are already done with deep learning here you're going to find a lot of flaws in the statements i'm about to make but just to get a good idea of the analogy what actually happens is that you take the whole image not parts of it and you throw it into the neural network and you can design a neural network to do to process images any way you want so what my neural network is doing here is that it has divided my picture into a grid and each input neuron is taking one section of the grid like this is going into the first one this is going into the second one this is going into the third one and you have nine different neurons that are taking each each slice of this picture that slice is being sent forward to these neurons and for example if you take this slice uh, over somewhere over here it's it's uh, trying to find that uh, is the eye distance appropriate is the how uh, over here you're looking at the nose length uh, you're you're looking at the lip size you're looking at the the uh, the features of the lips and and so on the difference between deep learning and machine learning mainly is that you're not defining any features here मैं उसको ये नहीं बता रहा कि आपने आई डिस्टेंस देखना है आपने ये देखना है द मॉडल इज डूइंग इट इट सेल्फ बाय टेकिंग द होल इमेज एंड कंपेयरिंग इट विद अदर इमेजेस इट्स फाइंडिंग फीचर्स ऑन इट्स ओन इट कुड बी लुकिंग एट एनीथिंग इट कुड बी लुकिंग एट अ चेन इट कुड बी लुकिंग एट द हेयर कलर एंड देन इट फाइनली आफ्टर लुकिंग एट ऑल द प्रोबेबिलिटीज इज गिविंग यू अ फाइनल रिजल्ट दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन between deep learning models and machine learning models every model works differently it is possible that the models you've worked on are a lot different from the one that i'm trying to explain but to give you guys proper intuition this is how it works now notice one thing over here notice ke um in our previous machine learning example we were just looking at eye distance we were calculating eye distance relative to the distance of the forehead to the chin that's all we were looking at and we were looking at the face structure over here we're looking at the hair color we could be looking at eyes we're looking at so many features we're processing the whole image we're processing each slice of the image and determining the probability ke abhi is this the person or not this takes a lot of computation power this is why deep learning is gpu intensive aap dekh rahe ho ki kafi log hote hain jo bahut heavy graphics card rakhte hote hain just to train their models it takes 5 6 i don't know 60 hours to train a program this is why it takes so long in deep learning so i'll talk a little bit more about that later uh, first i would like to check uh, the uh, comments does anyone have anything to say so there are a lot of activation functions and what activation function we use in this course kindly uh, first of all hum hum this is not a course this is just to give you a little understanding of what ai is so we're not actually going to be using anything i will give you resources to courses and you can check those out regarding ki kaun sa activation function use karna kaun sa nahi karna it's 901 now i'm going to try to wrap this up fast so moving on a little bit more on deep learning uh, the application of deep learning is you have self driving cars you have object detection and deep fakes so a self driving car again this was my computer vision ki baat ki thi usme it tries to look at a surrounding it takes the image of the surrounding puts it through your neural network and tries to determine ke what is the surrounding regarding which point pe rokna chahiye ya nahi rokna chahiye again object detection that was the example that we just did okay if uh, some of you have the newer versions of smartphones that just look at uh, your face you put your face in front of the camera and it just unlocks so that is object detection it is detecting if this person is moving or not 
and you have deep fakes for deep fakes is basically it's it's this is a huge issue that's going on these days it's it's viral that you use someone else's face on another actor through convolution neural networks so that is also achievable uh, there was this video that was released of uh, um, a comedian who was trying to mimic Barack Obama and he was saying some uh, absurd absurdities over there. So this is all achievable by uh, deep learning. So what should a person like you and I do who is stepping into deep learning and is like, yaar, mujhe ye neural networks banana padega, nahi banana padega, ye wale issues. For you, um, there are certain libraries in Python that you can use. You have Keras, you have PyTorch, you have FastAI. You make use of all these libraries to uh, achieve stuff. Uh, the way to get to these, like, I will provide resources on the courses that you can take for deep learning, uh, one thing. Secondly, uh, how to use these libraries, first of all. So again, um, Anaconda, you have uh, Anaconda Navigator, which includes 10,000 Python libraries at your disposal. So we're not going to get into that because it's already it's a lot of time has passed. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to again open my GitHub account. And if anyone of you wants to, uh, is like, I'm deep learning try kar raha tha. Lekin mujhe masla hi aara tha beech ke andar ke uh, mujhe mere se libraries load ho ke nahi de rahe the. I heard about fast AI, yeah, I heard about uh, Keras, I heard about PyTorch. Lekin uska issue hi aaya tha ke they weren't actually loading anything. Back end issues are there. So just for you guys, if you go to my GitHub profile, if you go to uh, the blog sections of my social handles, there is actually a whole blog on setting up Python environments using Anaconda, and this goes into a lot of details of how you can get it, how you can install it. Uh, please check this out and please make use of it. And as you can see here, I, uh, you here we are. Uh, you have these libraries that you can make use of. And these, there are 10,000 packages waiting for you to, to use in over here. Uh, another thing that I can do for you is that if you're currently doing deep learning and you're like, we're, we're hum mathematics mein phase kar hai, or hum iska practical implementation nahi dekh rahe. So again, another thing that I put out there for you is again on my GitHub, you have the uh, machine learning and deep learning repositories. These are actual classifiers, image classifiers, that uh, we have our first classifier that is around 60% accurate, then we have a 70% accurate classifier, and these are actual machine learning models. So I would urge you guys to check this out too. And I'll actually show you uh, a little bit about this uh, repository. I really hope it loads because sometimes when you're sharing screen, so I'm just gonna check the comments till then. Yeah, reload please. Okay. Please fill out the feedback form. Okay, do fill out the feedback form for certificates. That is important. Do join the Discord. That is important too. And uh, okay, one more favor I can do is that when this ends, I can also share. Okay, it's not reloading, so I can share all of the resources over here as well in the uh, MS team. So I will do that as well. So just stick around, please. I'm really sorry for the time delay. This is going longer than I would expect. I would hope it to, but okay, it's not working. So, anyways, just check out the repositories, and you will be intrigued by. Uh, the work that is being done on here, you can actually get to see some practical implementation over there. Uh, for learning purposes, you have uh, videos on fast AI. I will be providing this link. You have the deep learning course of Andrew NG on, um, on Coursera. You can make use of that as well. So all of these features are available to you. Okay, let's tip of the comments. Not opening, sir. Uh, it isn't opening over here as well. So just please be, please wait. Okay, the uh, I think this is an issue with the feedback form. So uh, if you can just join Discord, we will address this as well. But I think it should open. The it is uh, unrestricted. You can you can fill out the feedback form. Anyways, so coming back uh, over here, I gave you the deep learning repositories. I gave you Python repositories. I gave you the Anaconda Python installation method. All of that. So make use of that. Okay. Another thing that I've gotten for you guys is that I've created this repository last night. It's called the AI 101 repository. It is available on my GitHub. And I would like to emphasize about this one. That this is a little bit important that you guys do check this out. This is another hands on element. We don't have the time to implement these. But if you just look at this repository, you have um, 
you have notebooks on machine learning and you have notebooks on deep learning. All you have to do is go to this repository and download all of these notebooks and you can start working on them. And what's in them is that they're going to explain the theory and they're also going to be showing you how to implement those. Uh, these are really good uh, notebooks. I took them from they're, they're open source again, and I took them from uh, uh, my own learning path where I sort of fine tune my own skills. So I would urge you guys to please check this out and please make use of it. And if you guys find any errors or issues or whatever, you can fork it and you can um, fix stuff too. So it is important that you uh, make use of these hands on notebooks. These are just for you. OK, so this is for this workshop. Again, GitHub is an open source platform, and if you guys don't have accounts over there, I would tell you that it is a good place for you to start with. You can use other people's code to help build your code, and you can contribute to other people's codes as well. So that is a pretty nice thing. It's pretty neat. So moving on, uh, we're, we're about to finish. Uh, first of all, what are the problems with machine learning and deep learning? The problem with classic machine learning is that it's limited. This is you saw how an image classifier works for machine learning. It took my picture and it was unable to distinguish between uh, it, it took two to three features and it's pretty long and lengthy. And if you have someone who has uh, the same face structure as mine or who has the uh, same uh, length difference, relative length difference between the eyes and the uh, forehead and the chin, so classic machine learning is limited. The problem with deep learning is that it's GPU intensive. It requires a powerful graphics card, and at times it requires it requires multiple graphics cards just to uh, get data done. Because especially when we talk about computer vision, uh, self-driving cars, we talk about it. So if you are doing the whole thing, analyzing it, it is at a minute level. So it requires GPU. Secondly, it requires huge amounts of training data. I am currently working as an EEG intern. That's it. What EEG is basically is that we're trying to use patient data to um, study other patients and be able to tell ke which patient has uh, brain uh, problems, who has abnormalities in their brain. So the problem that we're facing over there is that we don't have data for patients that we can implement. Kare. So what we're trying to do is we're using data augmentation solutions that we can data ko left, right, over, and down. Karke na. इस तरह से बना देते हैं कि हम उसको इंप्लीमेंट वो यूज कर सकें अगेन अनदर इशू डीप लर्निंग इज के द कोड इज कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इट मेक्स थिंग्स इजियर हैविंग लाइब्रेरीज एंड ऑल बट इट इज सॉर्ट ऑफ डिफिकल्ट सो मूविंग ऑन द सॉल्यूशन टू ऑल ऑफ योर प्रॉब्लम्स आर क्लाउड टेक्नोलॉजीज माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एजूर इट प्रोवाइड्स वर्चुअल मशीन्स इफ यू डोंट नो व्हाट अ वर्चुअल मशीन इज दे आर सर्वर्स that do all of the tedious computation for you. You don't need a GPU. You don't need to get stuff done on your own. It provides cloud storage where you can store all your data. You can store your model and you it's it's basically a storage solution. And a very important point is that Microsoft Azure, yeah, this is basically a cloud solution. It also provides you with open data sets like you have a data set of the of patients or whatever, and you can use them in your model as well. And uh, another thing for people who who haven't started with machine learning, deep learning, and who don't want to go through all the mathematics or the programming, you have automated ML. What automated ML is, is you just drag and drop components and it does everything for you. So the problem is that uh, some of you might be thinking that uh, Microsoft Azure, it's a paid platform. It, it requires money. So if you just sign up for the free Azure credits, I'll actually show you over here. Um, free Azure. I think it's yes, it's this one. I, I'm also going to provide links to this. So you get $200 uh, just for signing up to Azure. Like, and I'll show you what that is, what having $200 means. Just let it load. I'm so sorry. I'll check the comments till then, till it loads. Explain Azure in detail, sir. I am explaining. Python is complicated. Yes, it is a little complicated if you don't make use of libraries and the features you have. Uh, OK, so first of all, if you go to this site, I hope it's loaded. You can go over here and you can acquire 200 Azure credits. And if I just, just let me sign into my Azure right now, I want to show you guys something very, this is very interesting. You guys are going to really like uh, what I'm going to show you here. Uh, just give me a minute. I'm so sorry. If, uh, we're going to end this all by 9.15.
just this these are uh, very informative things and i would really like you guys to know about uh, the solution to your deep learning problems okay it's not going to load in time so i'm just going to tell you that what i did was that i created two machine learning models i created one machine learning and one deep learning model and i deployed that on microsoft azure and the total cost that i got for for doing this was 0.64 dollars i just spent 0.64 dollars of my free credits I, I'm a student ambassador, so I get free credits. But if you guys sign up over here on using this page, I will provide the link to you. You can get 200 free Azure credits. And uh, it just takes you that much amount to learn Azure features and to learn what Azure has to offer in terms of machine learning and deep learning. And it gives you so many features like automated ML. You don't even need to know how to code. So this is the future. This is how you can automate your work and make it easier for you. And this is what I am doing currently right now. So just take my word, take my word that it was $0.64. I really can't give you any proof right now. I will send a screenshot to the Discord server of my budgeting too. But for now, let's just say okay, this is this is all it takes. Anyways, uh, another thing you can do is you can sign up for the student developer pack. I will give a link for that too. The student developer pack gives you $100 free dollars for uh, credits for Microsoft Azure, and it gives you credits for other stuff too that you can make use of. So I will give that offer to you guys as well. Moving on to the opportunities of AI, there is a huge amount of research opportunity in data analysis, ML, and DL. Um, if you guys want to contribute to actual world problems, this is your start. Uh, like for instance, you can find out that um, if you want to look for uh, solutions to certain problems, like how we can how we can in how we can implement a solution to uh, the education problem we have during the pandemic or the food supply pro problem due to the pandemic. You can make use of data analysis and you can find out solutions. You can create an AI that can actually give you solutions for the problems and do the thinking for you. So that is a huge uh, research opportunity you have in AI. Other than that, in the fields of AI. Uh, in terms of opportunity, someone asked this question about data processing and cleaning. So data processing and cleaning is basically uh, you get huge amounts of data and you use an AI to clean them. A lot of companies pay top notch for this to be done. Uh, like, for example, if you have uh, if you collected, if you did a survey to collect data from 500,000 people, there could be people who have used the wrong emails or the wrong data and you want to have an AI that can clean it up. So if you have something like if you have an email that says at the rate uh, something dot pk. So what your AI can do is it can learn that people who use PL or PS instead of PK, those accounts are invalid. So it can change PK to PS, uh, PS to PK or PL to PK and fix the issue. There's a lot of opportunities as a machine learning engineer. There's a lot of good paying jobs as a machine learning engineer, uh, especially if you go towards Tesla, if you see their computer vision technology that they're implementing um, in uh, for self-driving cars, it is a huge opportunity and this is the future of technology. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, this is a picture that is sent to you, is given to you at the end of the deep learning course by Andrew NG. I took the course myself, and uh, this is sort of a tribute to the guy that I'm able to do all of this stuff now because I took that course. And I would recommend you guys to take it too if you guys want to start out with deep learning. I will provide a link to that, but the problem is that that course is paid. There is a way for uh, people who are studying in certain universities due to the pandemic. Coursera is providing you with uh, uh with the um, free scholarships for those universities to take to avail to take those free courses but if not that then you can apply for financial aid if you're not earning right now and you can get that course done it will teach you a lot of stuff so that is all for uh this session uh, do make use of the resources i provide and now i will be taking questions for about four minutes then we can end the session Again, if anyone wants to leave, please join the Discord server. If you want to make use of the resources, please uh, uh, like save my GitHub profile and start making use of that. Um, now let's move on towards questions. OK, please fill out the feedback form for. Yes, please fill out the feedback form for the um, certificate. That is important. Okay, so what is our prediction with AI through Sieves? If we pass the 
data lake future ki prediction karna like whatever you can use up c or c++ use kar sakte hain lekin i would recommend ki aap python kare uh, first of all if you have experience with c and c++ it is very easy for you to switch to python it took me literally uh, one week or two weeks to learn all of python because c or c++ se wahi baatein ki hui hain jo ki aapke python mein ki hui hain lekin bas usme thode se syntax ka difference hai so you have to just learn that and iska fayda aapko ye hai ki if you're doing deep learning if you want to implement deep learning models so you have these libraries that do all the work for you so that's why you should move to python so mention the name please mention the name of what exactly uh, i think you're talking about um prediction apis uh i'm not really sure what you're asking here to usko dekh lete hain ठीक है, I've completed the machine learning deep learning courses from Coursera, but the problem is it includes a lot, exactly, it includes a lot of math, and all the assignments I've done was not related to any specific library. It was like implement this equation in Python. The problem with uh, the machine learning and deep learning courses on Coursera is that they teach you the math, and in the assignments, वो आपसे expect करते हैं कि आप उसी math को Python में convert करके लिखे हैं, तो उसका फायदा नहीं होता. लेकिन इसका फायदा आपको इस तरह से कि जब आप कोर्स पढ़ रहे होते हो ना आपको ये समझ आ रही होती है कि लाइक like, इसका स्कोप क्या है चीज क्या हो रही होती है इसके अंदर तो दिस इज अ गुड क्वेश्चन लेकिन आई विल प्रोवाइड यू विद द रिसोर्सेज अगेन यू कैन चेक चेक आउट दी नोटबुक्स दैट आई गिवन टू यू और नोटबुक्स में यू आर गोना हैव अ गुड दैट अ गुड आईडिया ऑफ व्हाट इज मशीन लर्निंग एंड डीप लर्निंग इन द हैंड्स ऑन अप्रोच एंड सेकंडली जो मैंने आपको एग्जांपल कराया था शुरू में आई होप के दैट हेल्प्ड क्लियर अप द रीजन के मैंने वो एग्जांपल कराया था वो यही था कि लोग इतने मैथ में फंस जाते हैं उनको ये समझ नहीं आ रही होती कि प्रोग्राम करना क्या चाह रहा है प्रोग्राम यही करना चाह रहा होता है इट्स ट्राइंग टू फाइंड एन आइडियल फिगर और ट्रेनिंग इट्स लर्निंग इट्स लर्निंग पैरामीटर लर्निंग पैरामीटर्स टू फिट द डेटा बिकॉज़ आई एम इन कोर्स एट रजिस्टर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी तो बेहतरीन ऑल यू हैव टू आई विल प्रोवाइड यू विद द लिंक्स द फर्स्ट लिंक इज um machine learning on coursera it's by andrew ng the second one is um deep learning by andrew ng at the end i'm going to give all the all of the resources and aside links provide kar dunga iske chabo ke i'll do that right now why am i not doing that now these are all of the resources i gathered for you guys so i'm just going to take the file and i'm going to just sorry i'm just going to upload that here resources um why 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 make things harder for you guys here you go I just cannot seem to upload it. Um, I'm not sure how I should be able to upload this here. Let me try again. I'm so sorry. Okay, it seems to be telling me that I cannot upload it. It's being blocked for some reason. So resources, which I'm going to provide for you, my Discord can. That I really hope that's not an issue. Uh, one more thing I can do is I can just upload it to my GitHub. हाँ आई कैन डू दैट आई विल अपलोड इट टू माई गेट हब यही आपके लिए जो रिपोजिटरी बनाई गई है ए आई वन ऑन वन के नाम से फॉलो दैट रिपोजिटरी एंड इधर मैं इंक्लूड कर दूंगा रिसोर्स डॉट टी एक्स टी का लिंक ठीक है जस्ट फॉर यू गाइज सो इफ यू गाइज ऑन वॉन्ट जॉइन डिस्कोर्ट बिकॉज ऑब्वियस वी कैन फोर्स एनी वन बट इफ यू जॉइन डिस्कोर्ट दी एडवांटेज इज के इसमें Uh, you have a lot of student developers like myself who are working there and are working on solutions so it's going to be very advantageous for you to join that discord link that is why we have created that uh, developers community uh, channel to begin with it has a lot of opportunities for you guys I'm very sorry i just scroll down completely um comments comments theek hai main aapko provide kar dunga acha sir ai Go forex trading financial market में robot बना सकते हैं बिल्कुल बना सकते हैं आप you can use AI anywhere you can use AI in trading लेकिन the problem you're gonna face is is के um, you need a lot of data to train the AI और जो forex trading है ना उसमें issue ये आता है कि वो लोगों के भी ऊपर से गुजरती है कि if you ask समझ ना कि कब करना चाहिए trade कब नहीं करना चाहिए तो वो issue आ सकता है तो Uh, for that thing, you have a field called blockchain. Blockchain, it's actually while trading, we only the Bitcoin, while trading, we be bad only. So I would recommend you, Safali, to uh, research on the field of blockchain. I saw a, rep- a private on repo of Unreal Engine. Can you help me with that? Uh, I am working a little bit on Unreal Engine. Um, I have been working on Unreal Engine for a while, but I sort of quit it. Um, I sort of quit that. The reason for that is because. um i 
had a team set up for Unreal Engine. Okay, we're going to work on this. And we were not able to figure out a way of making edits to each other's programs. It was more or less so I had to skip that and I will be continuing that on the future. If you need help for that, um, if you want to connect with me, then I will. Uh, can someone please provide my LinkedIn profile over here? I'll do it myself. Why, why do I ask anyone? Uh, you connect with me here, send a message to me here, and I will answer your questions regarding Unreal Engine. I have worked on Unreal Engine for a while, so it's not a problem. How did you as an E student get into AI and manage your time? Uh, if you want to know how I started, it was basically I wanted to start freelancing. I wanted to earn online. So someone told me that, that instead of going towards the classic content writing, what you should do is okay, you should learn uh, a certain skill. So I started out with machine learning. And when I started out with machine learning, um, I actually really love the field. I really love deep learning. I love the things you can do with it. I really recently I really loved the way that you can make use of cloud technologies and it's good. But the problem that I faced was um, everywhere I looked, I found math intensive stuff and they were program intensive stuff. And I was like, I want to see an actual model in action. So just for that reason, I have created that repository, which is called machine learning and deep learning models. Please check that out because it's actual models that are actually classifying problems. And I don't think you can find stuff like that anywhere. It's always uh, whenever you look at a deep learning solution, it's mainly a black box about the solution book and you don't even know what it's going to be. It's really hard to see. So I try to bring in solutions that make learning easier. So please check those out. Share the form, feedback form link, sir. OK, uh, I think it's above somewhere. Please look for that. I'll share it again. On GitHub, 